than it was before. Um, the music's being played in places that I've never been to before, and it's just blessings coming my way, you know. Kind of went through a, a little bit of a management change. I was initially working with Pyramid Entertainment, you know, and now my manager is Natasha Thomas from VP Records. Big ups, Natasha. But, uh, you know, just really just I've grown as an artist and grown as a producer, and that's the biggest change that I could really, you know, give to you right now. Other people might say there's been a bigger change in, in me and what's going on, but to me it's just what I've been seeing in my head for the past two, three years. So it ain't really nothing different. I can't see the change as much as somebody else will, change, will see the change. Um, well, we're definitely trying to touch all the different carnivals that's going on, the different crop over at Carabana, Trinidad Carnival. The main focus right now is radio, just because that's, from now until the end of time, I think that's going to be the biggest media outlet that we can possibly tap into. Um, obviously, the internet is great, but, you know, with Natasha, she deals a lot with, with program directors at the radio stations, and... Um, Definitely radio. Radio is number one way for us to get the music out. I grew up here in Connecticut. Um, on this side of the river, East Hartford. Grew up in East Hartford. Um, born in New York, but ra raised in Connecticut. And, you know, it's always going to be home. And my heart's always going to be here in CT, no matter what. I had to leave CT to kind of, you know, spread my wings and, and get a little bit more just recognition for what it is that I do, but definitely CT is always home base and always gonna have love for here. I live in the Virgin Islands, St. Croix, Virgin Islands. Um, doing a lot of traveling between St. Croix and Miami, but home base is, is St. Croix right now. That's where I spend most of my time and that's where I rest my head. It's a grimy, grimy business and it's not for for weak people, it's, you gotta be strong mentally, not just physically, you gotta be real strong mentally because you know there's days where the music industry could break you, just it gets discouraging at times. But you just, when that discouraging feeling comes, that's when you gotta start working harder and pushing harder. Cause you know, if it was something that was easy for people to do, everybody would be a singer, everybody would be a producer. But because it's so challenging, you know, only the strong survive in it. And definitely I consider myself a strong person. I love it. I love it. It's hard, but I love it. I couldn't answer that question, to be honest. The biggest song, my favorite song is the song I'm releasing in 2013. Which, to me, is going to be a hit. But right now, you know what I mean? They all my baby. I love them all, you know, equally. And I, I really couldn't choose... A favorite one but you know depending on where you go like Barbados crop over 2009 the song that really took off for me there was happiness it's just like a, a double entourage song where it has two meanings to the song happiness means something else you know it, it, I got a bunch of different double entourage songs and hidden meaning songs with subliminal messages in it but you know that, that that's probably the one that's that's ringing more bells than, than any of the other ones. That one, and another one I have with Peter Ram called Dip It Low. Well, you know, my inspiration comes from my passion and my love for other genres of music. Um, you know, originally I started off with hip-hop music, and back when I was doing hip-hop, it was a more lyrical, you know, you had to be very articulate to be considered a dope MC. You know, you had to be witty and smart and have good punchlines to come up with with what people were looking at as good music. 
Um, and also, I'm a big country music fan. And with country music, you can't just have words that rhyme. Like, you got to have some sort of concept, and it has to make sense. It has to be, has some sort of intellect to be considered good music. And, you know, those influences are what influenced me with writing my soca music. Soca music is a type of music where you can be witty and still have a good melody and a good catchy hook. And, you know, people don't look at it like, you know, this, this guy is trying to be too elevated or too intellectual for us because it's a very intellectual music. Us Caribbean people are very intellectual people. So, you know, it's one of the reasons why I love soca music is because I could be witty and be clever with my lyrics. And I just kind of zone out when I'm writing them. Honestly, I don't remember making the song when I made it. Like, I listen to it after I'm done and I'm just like, whoa. Is that really me that made that song? And it's just the whole, you know, creative process to it. I just really zone out and I can't really. Um, to be real, real honest, I was in St. Lucia one time and I heard one of my cousins arguing with her boyfriend. And because of the accent that they have down there, you know, they say certain words and they might sound different to an American person or a Beijing person because the accent is different. So, you know, she was saying something about, oh, you know, you're not bringing any happiness into my life, any happiness. And just the way she said it, I kept hearing something else. Like, I didn't realize that she was saying happiness until, you know, I listened to her say it a few times. But, you know, that's just what triggered in my head the fact that, I could use an accent in a song and, you know, bring a different meaning to a word. And that's really the, 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 the honest truth about it. Like, it was just an accident type of song. I heard somebody saying something and boom, that little dirty light bulb in my head just went off. And, um, you know, that, that's really where the song came from. But, you know, women need certain something in their life and some guys just ain't providing it for them. So that's where the, the real... My soca side ties in with the little dirty guy side in my head, the, the, the dirty light bulb trying to be, you know, make it a dirty song. Like, it's a dirty song, but it's a clean song and it's a good, happy, fun, loving song as well. So. Yeah. Well, my mother's from Barbados, St. Michael's, Barbados. My father's from St. Lucia, a big little town called Schwazel. Um, and, you know, donkey years ago, my father's family moved to St. Croix. And my grandparents moved there, and the whole family lived there. And that's where my, my cruising roots come in because, you know, he grew up his, you know, late teens, early 20s in St. Croix. And just going back and forth between Connecticut and St. Croix for vacation growing up, I developed a love for the Caribbean. Like, I didn't really, I wasn't in the culture living up here like how it is now like when I'm in St. Croix but going back and forth and finally taking one last trip in my adult years I just fell in love with it you know just the Caribbean is the best place in the world to me um, but you know I, I had it in my household growing up I got a little taste of it little glimpses of it but now that I'm there that's I'm stuck there I, I don't want to leave and it's the greatest place in the world I love you on that, I mean, really, when I make a song, I try to make something that's not current and it's not from the past. I try to l listen and, and say, you know, what's music going to sound like six months so that, you know, if I have to hold on to this song for a little bit, it's not going to sound outdated, you know, when I put it out six months or a year from now. So it might sound weird, but I kind of think in the future when I'm making my music, I don't want it to sound like anything that is playing on the radio now or if it is like some of the songs that I'm putting out now they're from two years ago so they're just sitting in the stash and the powers that be that push my music decide this is the song we want to roll with and you know let, let's let's do it um, but I was joking about the tw the 2013 thing but really and truly like I don't have I don't have a favorite song so it's got to be a song from the future because the music that I have right now is just you know I hear it so much, I'm, I'm listening to it like everybody else, and I know my best is yet to come. Um, right now, I'm working, my manager is Natasha Thomas, 
She's the head of promotions for VP Records in Florida and the Caribbean. We made the link in St. Croix. She had come down to do some promotional work. And um, I mean, one of our mutual DJ Connects linked us up. And from there, it's just been a match made in heaven. Like she, she really supports the movement that I'm trying to make and supports me as an artist as well as a person. And that's a big you know, necessity in, in terms of what I look for from somebody that's going to be representing me and helping me and supporting my movement. And, you know, I just been blessed with her because she's, she's a go-getter and, you know, she's, she's definitely helped me push the music. And oh, we could invite your sister and we could invite your mother. Connecticut and especially the town that I'm from, East Hartford, is such a culturally diverse place. You got, you know, Caucasian people, African American people, Caribbean people, Hispanic people. You have so many different types of people and different cultures and different music and different food. It's, you know, like a cultural melting pot here in Connecticut. And me being the lover of cultures that I am, like, I. I cling on to each of, each of those different cultures and, you know, definitely from a musical standpoint, it's influenced me a million times over just because, you know, music is, is an international language. Like, that's one thing that people can vibe on. No matter where you're from, what color your skin is, people vibe to music. And um, being here, I was able to be exposed to a bunch of different cultures and it helped create, you know, this Omari Ferrari character that I have that I am, that, you know, I've embodied and, you know, it, it, it's definitely helped being here in Connecticut and being around the different cultures that I'm around, for sure. Right now, we got the birthday song that's out on the Tola Rhythm, produced by my boy Kamal Georges. Um, and, you know, that song is, is starting to... to touch places all over the world because it's a birthday song um not to mention it has a little twist to it and a little suggestive subliminal message to it but it's you know soka doesn't have a popping birthday song right now and the birthday song is that you're gonna hear it request it the birthday song everybody has a birthday listen to the song the next song i got is called dangerous whiners um just another groovy raga soka type of vibe mixed with dance hall and maybe I shouldn't be spilling this but because this dance hall is so good nah, nah, I can't spill it yet but um look out for a real 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 big collaboration on the remix for that song as well as working on my album debut album um, not titled yet but because we're working with different management and different push and everything definitely got to put out a new album put out an album for the people to to really learn who this Omari Ferrari guy is and learn the music and learn learn about me and what's going on in my head. And I definitely just want to make my contribution to the music world, the soca world. And, you know, I love it, so I want to contribute to it to keep the culture going and just make my contribution to the world. Man, it's a tie between Barbados Cropover and Trinidad Carnival. Um, Trinidad Carnival is out of this world. It's two days of just madness, not to mention the two or three months before, but the actual two days of Carnival, um, I was there for 2009 and my foot, my right foot was hurting me until January 2010. That's how bad Trinidad Carnival is. Crop Over is lovely because it's a miniature size of Trinidad Carnival. Very, you know, a lot of similarities, but it's not as intense as Trinidad Carnival and you know I love both of the places so just to be there and be around those people and the music and it's it's a real good soca representation of what soca music is and you know it's a party a big party two big parties Omar Ferrari is a producer songwriter singer Entertainer, hardworking dude that's just gonna give you my all. Every time I, I, I put my voice on a song, this is your boy Omari Ferrari. Check out Dance Hall Soka on Channel 5 every Thursday at 10.30. Greatest show in the world, Dance Hall Soka.